Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Ellensburg, Washington, USA. I forgot to put my microphone on this morning. The local time is 9.46 in the morning, and we will begin our program on Celestia at 10 minutes after 10. You remember how what we do on quiz days? Um, so you have a little bit longer to wait than normal uh, for the beginning of our program this morning. But we'll take a little time to uh, say hi to everybody, and then um, uh, I'll give you a little slideshow while these guys are taking their quiz number three. So are we functional this morning? Make sure that we're doing okay. Mason says hi this morning. In fact, I got a uh, gift in the mail from Eric. Eric is in uh, Marion, Virginia. It's a bookmark that says, we have a Mason sighting. As well as, hold on, Patrick, and sorry, Patrick. We have a Mason sighting. Mason's uh, in fuego this morning. Trying to calm him down just a little bit, but he's ready for action. Okay, so good morning. Uh, Kay says good morning, Mason, but he's already talking to somebody else. Okay, so Letha Lee, good so far. Judy, good morning. Papa Gino, where are you viewing from this morning? I can say hi and uh, say some new towns perhaps this morning. Uh, Hillsboro, Illinois, that's Jay. And uh, North Dakota, oh yeah. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Avery, California. I love the new names uh, to us. New Zealand, I'll say some other ones. Southwestern, Southwestern, Southwestern Iowa, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hello, Adele from Disco Park. Uh, Glasgow, Scotland. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, Finland is here. Houston, Texas. Too fast now to read. Let's just see. Let's grab things. Vernon, British Columbia. Apache Junction, Arizona. Good morning. Sunnyvale, California. Unity, Wisconsin. That must be up north there. Uh, Portland, Oregon. Anacortes, Washington. Toronto, Ontario. Fairview, uh, Pennsylvania. Edmonton, Alberta. The Netherlands. Norley bought her bike. Uh, yesterday in Johannesburg. Uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Did I already say that? Michael's in Trim, Ireland. Hello, Michael. I remember you and your daughter's uh, uh, email and photo. Nice to see you. Worcester, Mass. Athena, Oregon. Something Ridge, British Columbia. Milwaukee, Oregon. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Osceola, Indiana. Indiana, 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 all for you. Uh, stop it, Mason, stop it. Talk, go, may, talk about the study stuff, please. Mason's hassling me. He's hazing me this morning. I feel unsafe. <laughs> Idaho Falls, rock on. India, hello, amazing Indian. Uh, Lincoln Pink, Scotland. Uh, just, oh boy. Lincoln Pink, Sweden. Yitta Boy. Is that how you pronounce that one? Vekwa. Some of our best friends are from Alvis to Sweden. So we spent a memorable summer there long ago with our kids. Uh, Kimmy, neighbor Kimmy is here, Ellensburg in the beautiful Kittitas Valley. Mason, calm down, please. I woke up and turned violence today. Stop. <laughs> Obnoxious. And a lock of hand work. Please, I, I'm, you're, you're, you're getting to me already here. All right, so uh, I'm so glad that you're with us today. Uh, if you are new to us and not sure what's happening... Um, at the top of the hour, you will hear me uh, talk about quiz number three. And when the students are taking their quiz for 10 minutes, I'll roll the uh, laptop in, I'll spladam, and I will show you a slideshow. 
And the slideshow this morning features notes from this class from a townie named Ashley who lives in Seattle. I don't know anything about Ashley, but I've seen her uh, geology notes, which are more art than they are notes. But uh, if you're a regular of this 101 class, you'll recognize much of what she has done. But she has some colored pencils and I don't know what else. And I don't know a Ashley's backstory or anything, but um, she's given me permission to share uh, many of her uh, notes with you. Uh, so it's on a loop. It's a little slideshow. And uh, Ashley from Seattle, I'll even, uh, uh, she's active on Instagram. So I'll show you, I'll show you right now. No, I'll wait. The first slide I'll have for you is uh, Ashley's uh, Instagram page. If, you, if you're on Instagram and you want to just kind of continue to see what she's up to. But occasionally she'll at me or whatever, tag me, and uh, I'll see what she's doing. Um, so that's the treat for you today. And then we will talk about Celestia. I'm going to go chat with some folks. Uh, okay. So we got, uh, even the slackers are here today. It's a quiz day. Thanks for joining us. Seems, seems like I'm forgetting something. It'll come to me, I guess. Let me check one more time. The mic is working, right? I, I forgot to even set up the mic properly. So can I check one more time with the delay in the comments? Are we doing okay? Five by five, audio and visual. We don't have that crackling again. I think we've solved that. Now I jinxed it, of course. John, five by five. Joni. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll get started at 10. Thanks. Mason is drilling the students. How can you hear that? I was talking to the home crowd. How could you hear that? I was like muttering in the corner. Mason, can Mason hear me right now? I don't know. Can Bryce hear me right now? Can you hear me right now, Bryce? So you can't hear me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Townie Jeff in the hizzy. What's going on, Doc? Good to see you. I saw your workers out this morning. A couple of guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it must get old after a while. Oh my God, there's still a lot of these things. Are we out? Are we out of interest? There's so much here. You've all picked this over, huh? All right. Well, I'll give these all to Bryce. He seems to be into it. Oh, people took the... Oh, are we down to the... Oh. So somebody took most of these U-Rock things. That's good. Did you get your sample? There's probably some agates around your neck of the woods. How much do you get out and look around... Bickleton. Yes. Do you live in town? In the town of Bickleton? I, I do not. <laughs> you do? Mm -hmm. My mom is a rock town. And is so she? we've gone all over looking for rocks and stuff. Oh, wow. Like, we have a collection of stuff. Um, and she watches your stuff. Actually, oh, cool. So. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So, uh, How's your sense of direction? What from where from at 11 miles? What direction from Beckleton is your place? Uh, south. south, so you're yeah. almost to the river, kind yeah, of almost. We're like halfway between the river and mm -hmm. Beckleton itself. You guys, farmers, kind of, yeah. We had cattle once, but we had we sold them because we're moving. Oh, you are. Oh, are, uh huh. So, you Took the school bus 11 miles each way. Yeah. It, 
it's a longer bus ride because there's several of us out there, like yeah. five, you know. Yeah. But oh my god, yeah, it, yeah. So. So what did your parents do when you were growing up? Were they working the land or they were working someplace else? Uh, my dad was sometimes a farmer uh -huh. for some people, but um, he used to be a mechanic for the landfill, which is like right next door, basically. Oh, I see. Um, and then mom works for the courthouse in Goldendale. In Goldendale. In Goldendale. Yeah. So they're moving to Goldendale. So oh, they are. I'm tired of the driving back and forth. Yes. Yeah. It, takes a lot of gas money. Oh, sure. Oh, cool. All right. Well, don't be shy now. I I'll leave those with you, Emily. If, if they all if they all go in your backpack, I won't uh, th that'll be good. Hold it. Hold it. Everyone. That was your example? <laughs> yeah, you're standing right there. A pyroclastic. Scared, Nick. I'm making you scared. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> Nick's not scared of me. I'm a pacifist. Why did it go quiet? We have studying to do. Grand Ron, how old? Yeah, look at him. You've got like three minutes. Go. Who died? But not because they were being stubborn and just decided to stay there, but because oh, unfortunately God. we didn't know as much about the eruptions as we should have with Mount St. Helens. And you can phone a friend if you'd like to. I can't remember the scientist's name, but there's this geologist that was studying up there. And I know it's not Brian Atwater, but that's the name mm -hmm. that's in my head right now. Not so Atwater. Mm -hmm. You want to phone a friend? Somebody's raising their hand. Nobody oh, knows what phone a friend means, do they? That's like a 20 year old reference. David John. Perfect. And Tommy, Good. for a bonus point, who is the crazy old dude who stayed up because he's the equivalent of an anti vaxxer? Very true. Wait, true. is he a privilege? Oh my. Yeah, give us into the science. Keep, no, this is, is a no politics that. zone. Let's go. It's not a political thing. It's an anti science. We're thing. not in a courtroom now. Let's keep going. Okay, so. Can you confirm then, Nick Horst? Because I want to make sure I'm not like telling people the wrong thing. The Lahars are more <laughs> too dangerous. late now. You've been at it for 24 hours. Go ahead. <laughs> the Lahars are going to be more dangerous as they're following the river valleys in terms of the people that they end up reaching. Uh, yeah, you know the population density, of course, is more concentrated along rivers. So yes. Okay, that's what we were covering. But if it had the same range as those Lahars to go through, the pyroclastic would be worse because it can just go right over those barriers. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Christina, Grand Rod, age, percent, hey, let's reach the ocean. I'm going to interrupt. Let's get you off of that. Let's do a little bit of page 33 real quick. Okay. That's way more important than uh, Mason's covering some good content, but let's focus it a little bit. I'm not even sure if you're an excellent student, you've already got 33 stamped in your brain. You don't even need to turn to it, but you're turning to it anyway. That's right. So um, in the remaining uh, one minute, uh, Get page 33 in your head. Christina, what formed 40 million years ago because of something involving the Farallon plate? What happened with the Farallon plate? thought that was going to be a silent minute. I guess not. It's <laughs> <laughs> a creative way to shut him up, but it didn't work. It's Mason. You can't. That's right. It's like a... It's like an animal. You can't cage a wild animal. You gotta let him, gotta let him run free. This is okay. So these volcanoes came about the two million years. Wild safari. So what's the oldest volcano then? Or what's the I'm getting a headache. All right, let's go. Let's start this thing. Jeff, you want to take the quiz? I got one for you. Yeah. See what I retained in the magnetic. Uh, yep, absolutely. Um, sure. What do we see for? Right outside of Washington. Right outside of Washington for the parallel plate for on the parallel plate. Okay, Mason, 
All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being on time and ready to go. Uh, this is our Tuesday morning session, and we have business to take care of. I don't need to tell you how we do this. We've done this twice already. So let's do this quiz number three. The notes go away. When you finish, you stay put. You put this face down. You daydream. We'll collect these as a group at 10 minutes after, and away we go. Okay? Quiz three. Let's do it. Jeff, come on down. I'll give that to you right there. Casey and Bryce. Mason and JC. Emily, too, and Christina. The Vowel Boys, Kieran and Emily, one. Eve and Tawny and one long distance dedication down to Jordan. Jack, Hunter, Michaela. Okay. This is a short quiz. Take your time. Do good work. Stay put. Thank you.
I think another minute, another one more minute is a fair time. Okay, I figure that's a fair amount of time. Can you make sure your name is on your paper? That was a short and sweet quiz. It sends all the way down to your left, all the way to the south. We'll collect them down here. Make sure your name's on it. And let's get our head right. We're going to go right into a lecture. So can we make that transition mentally? Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Casey, thanks. I didn't Thanks even know Pedro was here. We have a Pedro sighting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That's the last quiz of the quarter. And we only have one more assessment and that's the final exam coming uh, a week from this Friday. And I'll tell you more about that final exam later this week. But it's always odd after a quiz, it's always hard for us to transition to something new and to try to just keep ourselves alert. But I challenge you to do that today because I'm coming to you late today. I'm coming to you late with a Celestia origin set of ideas. So kind of like we did with the Columbia River Basalts, I'll be wondering if you have an idea or two on the spot about why we have Celestia. Of course, we don't know anything about it yet. So I'm coming to you as my point, but hopefully we can just keep the energy up. The energy is good right now, and that must mean that things went pretty well for the quiz. And if you want to know how you did on the quiz specifically, uh, when you were taking the quiz, I walked down to my office and I posted the uh, answer key down there. So like we've done before, that's how you can uh, see your how you did. And then I'll post the scores on Canvas by tomorrow morning, let's say. Okay, so let's go ahead. I've got some uh, final thoughts from yesterday, kind of ran out of time. And then we'll transition to the topic today. So I want to start in California because that's where we ended last time. And it was a little bit rushed. And we had a page in the yellow book, page 40, that I did pretty quickly. And it's a, it's a semi-important page. So we want to start with page 40, make sure we understand some of the talking points from the Sierra Nevada range in Eastern California and what the significance of that Sierra range is with all that beautiful granite. And then we will come back to Washington and talk about something called the Crescent Basalt. I'm kind of stalling so that you can get this outline down if you don't have it down already. So the crescent basalt is our focal point today. We want to do some field data like we've done the last couple of lectures. And then we want to do some storytelling involving this thing called Teletsi. It's an exciting set of ideas that will launch us into Thursday and Friday talking about this thing called exotic terrains. Okay, that's the game plan for today. So to get us into it, let's start with something on the chalkboard. And what you have annotated on page 33. So I know you just turned to 40, but can you go to 33 as well? 33, I think you have some X's and you have some, some circles, some O's, some X's and some O's, like this huge tic-tac-toe type of a game. 
Uh, but I want to remind you of our nomenclature here to understand the significance. So this is me hand drawing these states, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Idaho. We good there. We know this is the Cascades, correct? We know it's a volcanic arc. It's part of the big three. And we know that these little circles are the active stratovolcanoes or composite cones of the Cascades. That's old news by now. And we know why those Cascades are there. Here's St. Helens, et cetera. Okay, good. Now, at the latitude of Cape Mendocino, things change in a hurry. This is all review. And this is a map today. This is not a map from the past. So I don't know, does your um, zero million year panel on page 33 look like this? Does it have a bunch of X's running down the eastern part of California? If it does not, put some X's in. Those X's are ghost volcanoes, places where we used to have O's, but they've been converted to X's. None of this is brand new if you've been really on top of your game, but if you're losing it a little bit, I'm just trying to get as many of us together as possible. So we take the active cones, I'm coming to you in a second, that's a warning, and we convert the O's to X's. We convert the standing, beautiful, erupting composite cone volcanoes, and we convert them to ghost volcanoes. When did this begin? How many millions of years ago in California? Oh, God, I, 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 it's a silver platter. Do you see my hand? It's on a silver platter. Let's try it again. When did we start making X's in Eastern California? How many millions of years ago? I'm hearing 20, and that's a good thing. That was the crux of the quiz that you just took. 20 million years ago is when everything goes berserk. Everything goes haywire in California. 20 million years ago. Why? The active cones suddenly stop erupting. Why? Because we start forming the San Andreas Fault. Why? Because North America starts crossing the East Pacific Rise. What I want to do here right now, before we get to Celestia, is show you the field evidence to show you what these X places look like, because you were curious about it when we first studied page 33. Capiche? Okay, let's do it. Let's go to Eastern California, part of the volcanic arc, but it's a dead volcanic arc. The Sierra Nevada mountains in Eastern California today are a dead volcanic arc. Spladam. And we come in for the home viewers and for you guys. I always take an extra moment to get our both of our lenses focusing on this. I think we've got it. So this is an oblique view of California. Again, reviewing from yesterday, there's the big three, the dead big three in the state of California today. We are going here. We're going to the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Even though the volcanoes are gone, and there are X's there, we have a mountain range. And that's part of what page 40 is telling us. So page 40, you recall, I'm back to 40 now. Uh, so we did this quickly last time, and I want to do it quickly again, but just the second pass through it might actually work. Page 40 says that before 20 million years ago, we had an active convergent oceanic versus uh, continental plate boundary, and we had beautiful cone volcanoes like the Cascades in Eastern California. They ain't there anymore. They're all gone. Why? Because of what we just said. But now we're looking more carefully. Remember, we did this very quickly last time. I'm doing it again very quickly. We no longer have subduction of the Farallon plate. Yes, we have an oceanic plate offshore, but it's not the... Farallon plate, it's the Pacific plate. Why is this Pacific plate not subducting beneath California? It's going the wrong way. I didn't even really hear what you said. A bunch of people just went, blah, 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 and I, I kind of heard it and said, correct. It's going towards Japan. You probably said the correct thing, so thank you for participating. The Pacific plate back then and now is moving northwest. It's impossible for the Pacific plate, as it's moving currently, to subduct beneath our coast. So that's why we have the San Andreas Fault. You if you're a good student, you have it drawn in right now. And as long as we have the San Andreas Fault, we have a dead volcanic arc. Last comment from yesterday, 
not only do we have a dead volcanic arc, but the volcanic material is gone. And even at the crest of the Sierra Nevada mountains, as I'm about to show you some beautiful photographs from the Sierras, even if you're in the high peaks of the Sierra Nevada mountains of Eastern California, you are in diorite. I want to change what I said yesterday. I used the word granite, which is a casual term. I think because we are 101, I want us to remember that cones are made out of andesite, which is volcanic, 60% silica, remember? And diorite is the magma chamber rock below an active composite cone range. So forget what this says. We don't even know what this granodiorite means. Let's just change this to diorite. Let's just be consistent in our discussions, okay? Good. So I'm about to show you some photos of the diorite of Eastern California, which is the evidence that we had these beautiful cones once upon a time. I think I've got everybody now, and that's a wonderful thing. So again, I get myself centered as properly as I can. Now, this is not only talking about the mountains of, sea of Eastern California, but it's promoting being a geology major here on this campus. So long ago, 25 years ago, I started a field class in Owens Valley of California. These are central students. So as soon as somebody took this class and said, I want to major in geology, we said, well, let, let's load you up in the vans in September. Let's drive you uh, down to Eastern California. Let's spend two weeks down there and teach you how to make geologic maps. We'll be hiking around in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains, about 25 students every year. And it's a required part of our geology program. It's called Geology 210. It still exists. I no longer teach it because I'm an old man now. But back in the day, I was there living it up with everybody. And we're out hiking every day. We're teaching people how to break open rocks, study the rocks, basically apply the Geology 101 and Geology 101 lab experiences. And there was also, and still is, a beautiful social ability. In other words, there's a, there's a bonding. You go through this experience together. It's intense. You're hiking every day from 8 to 5. You're in the evening. You're in the office every evening in the air-conditioned trailer, and you're making, you're drafting up your maps. And, and it's, it's a lot of work. It's four credits of work in, in, two, in two weeks. But we have a lot of fun, and we get to know each other probably too well in that two weeks. And then those are the folks that you are spending your time with in the rest of our geology classes here. So see me if you're interested in taking Geology 210 in the fall. We can, we can hope, can't we, that we can actually use the frickin' vans in the fall and we can actually go and do a field course. That's our hope. And yeah, there's shenanigans, shall we say, around the campfire and up at 10,000 feet at Crooked River, uh, Crooked Creek. I uh, can't remember the name of the place. Crooked Creek? Yeah, up in the White Mountains of, of Eastern California. Okay, that's a little flavor, but we do all sorts of geology in the foothills of these mountains that we're talking about, these Sierra Nevada mountains. Now, most do not go to Bishop, California and the Owens Valley or the places that we used to make geologic maps. They go to sexy places like this, Yosemite National Park. Have you heard of it? This is not, Yos this is not Yellowstone. It's, a, it's another Y National Park. Yosemite and Yellowstone often confused. Yellowstone's in Wyoming. That's the one with the hot water and the, 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 the geysers and Old Faithful and that sort of thing. Yosemite is the place where there's nothing but diorite as far as the eye can see. The entire national park is one kind of rock. You are in the magma chamber of that volcanic arc when the volcanic arc went, was alive, when the Farallon plate was subducting. So, of course, the diorite of uh, Yosemite Park is older than 20 million years old because it's back to when the Farallon Plate used to subduct. Casey, major head nodding this morning. Way to go. Nice job. So that underground magma chamber rock has been uplifted and exhumed. And there's all this onion-like exfoliation of these big slabs of quote-unquote granite. Again, I get caught in this because most normal people call this granite. But in Technically, in geology, we call it diorite because of the details of the mineral content. So everything you see, this is Half Dome. These are famous places in Yosemite Park. We're just putting a finishing touch on this. And I want to remind you, this is the future of the Cascades. Pause for dramatic effect. Do you remember? 
we decided 10 million years from now, when we were looking at page 33, that the Cascade volcanoes were going away. Remember this discussion now? And we're like, oh, okay, so what's going to happen? We're going to get this. Our magmas beneath Rainier, St. Helens, Adams, etc. will solidify. They will be uplifted. And we will have this same set of Half Dome and El Capitan here in eastern and western Washington. Got distracted. It, where the Cascades are now in Washington and Oregon, we will have a Yosemite-like scene. I have a Mason sighting and he's going to speak. There will probably, uh, Mason wonders, are we going to see more lava tubes and other kinds of underground lava systems? And we will for a while, but the uplift is so severe. Even at the very tops, can I, I, I don't want to overstate this, but we are way above 12,000 feet with Mount Whitney, let's say. It's, it's, it's diorite. Even the, the highest peaks in the Sierra Nevadas are underground magma chamber rocks. I mean, it's a complete erasure of all of that volcanic material, even the lava tubes and other things like that. Okay, good. Let's move on to the topic of today. Thank you. That was supposed to go with yesterday. Now, you have been taught about geologic maps in the lab. Each color is a different kind of rock. And let me get you oriented. This is Western Washington. So here's the crest of the Cascades. Here's Seattle, all that yellow on this geologic map is glacial till. And here is the Olympic Peninsula that we talked about yesterday. What, what, what color is this? Light blue? Let's call it light blue. All of this light blue are the kinds of rocks that we talked about yesterday. What did we talk about yesterday? Shale, sandstone, slate. Thank you. So that's the interior of the Olympic Peninsula shale, sandstone, and slate. Did we put an age on that rock? We did. What's the age of all that? What, what kind of information do we have about the age of the shale, sandstone, and slate, Jordan? Younger than 40 million years. Correct. That's big for us today. All of this light blue is younger than 40 million years. But there's more to the story of the Olympic Peninsula than that younger than 40 million year sandstone, slate, and shale. I purposely avoided this discussion yesterday, and we're breaking out a whole separate discussion today. The focus today is this brown, and this brown is called the crescent basalt. It's on your outline. There's a more detailed map of the same frickin' thing. Okay, let's look more carefully. Here's Seattle. Here's Bremerton on the Kitsap Peninsula. Here's some of that brown. Here's some of that crescent basalt. Crescent, like a moon crescent. It's on the outline. Everything in brown is this crescent basalt. Here's Port Angeles. Anybody been on Hurricane Ridge before? Two of you. Hurricane Ridge is a beautiful ridge just south of Port Angeles. So you leave the town of Port Angeles, you drive immediately south, you climb and climb and climb, you go into Olympic National Park, and at the very top of Hurricane Ridge is a visitor center. And on that drive up Hurricane Ridge, it's basalt. Now, wait a minute. Basalt? I thought the Olympic Peninsula was sandstone, shale, and slate. It is in the light blue, but I'm now helping you see that there is a kind of a ring, kind of a very obvious horseshoe shape on a geologic map of this crescent basalt, and it has to be dealt with. We can't ignore it. We ignored it yesterday. We can't ignore it today. Now, here's what it looks like on Cynthia's poster that I've been showing you. Here's all that crazy younger than 40, thank you, Jordan, that younger than 40 sedimentary material that was scraped off the ocean floor. You remember it from yesterday. And here's this crescent basalt that extends down into the subsurface of the eastern portion of the Olympic Peninsula and even part of the Kitsap Peninsula. And if I may be so bold, 
I think she could have included way more crescent basalt here. It's a dominant. There's a huge amount of basalt in the subsurface. All right, self-promotion time, nauseating. You, you, got, a, you got a garbage uh, uh, can next to you. You can, you can hurl into it as I talk about myself. I'm not. But this is from the TV program that we do. And this is the episode on the Olympic Peninsula and looking at this Hurricane Ridge basalt. So that's a look up from Hurricane Ridge looking into the guts of the National Park. So that's all the younger than 40 stuff. Yeah, it's wet along the coast. We got to set the stage. I'm not, show, I'm not uh, giving you the narration here or the soundtrack. But eventually, I think I, I, I cut it once we get to... No, I'm just setting the stage. Sorry. This is just looking at the scenery from yesterday, essentially. Uh, the whole river as well. That's Mount Olympus, not volcanic, right? But let's take one more clip from this program where we now drive up Hurricane Ridge to that viewpoint. And I want to just show you some of the footage that we captured of this incredible amount of basalt along the Hurricane Ridge Road. Let's do it. Can we do it, please? Oh, there's the visitor center up on top. Oh, my God. Get to it. Thank you. So most of that drive is not sandstone shale and slate. Most of that drive is basalt, and the basalt has pillows. Do you remember pillows basalts? What's the interpretation of pillow? Yeah. Magma flowing into water, mafic magma flowing into water. So why do, look at these beautiful pillows, by the way. Why do we have those pillows there? All we're doing is data collection right now, but we have massive amounts of pillow basalt in the crescent formation that we have to address. All right, knock it off. All right, so that's hoping to get you thinking about this. Remember, I'm coming to you before we quit. I'm coming to you. Now, I want to do a little bit with the chalkboard and give you more data. We're done with that. Right. Good energy. Good energy. I'm grateful to you. So here's me erasing what we did yesterday showing you the crescent basalt with this uh, pattern. Uh, here's Port Angeles. Here's Bremerton. Those are our two cities that are landmarks for us here uh, today. Okay. So this is Mount Olympus, this X. I shouldn't even do X because that looks like a ghost volcano. That was our symbol before, right? So Mount Olympus and all this stuff. Jordan tells us this is younger than 40 million years. And we know the origin of that stuff. That's the stuff that came in off the ocean. Now, what else do we know so far from recent lectures in this class? Well, we can put the cascades in, can't we? And I'm using this other symbol just to emphasize that we have our active composite cones in the volcanic arc. Remind me, please, from the last couple of meetings, when did the Cascades begin? Number, please. 40. 40. 40 million years start. And, of course, the Cascades are still here. So this is the magic number of the day. Why is this stuff younger than 40 accumulating here along much of the Olympic Peninsula, gradually coming in in the process we talked about with the snow shovel yesterday? And why did the Cascades show up about the same time? And that, of course, is the magma generation in a subduction zone and coming up. I'm not there yet. I got to give you more data, but I'm coming to you in a second. Wouldn't it be nice to know the age of this basalt? Sure it would, and I'm going to give it to you right now. This is the crescent basalt, and the crescent basalt was erupted between 56 and 48 million years ago. 
This is data. I'm not telling a story yet. You're going to tell the story in just a second. We're just going to try to put a story together, you and I. But this crescent basalt has been studied very, very carefully for more than 100 years. And in many places, there are pillows, which Casey reminds us means that we have lava flowing into water. In other places, the crescent basalt is not pillows, but it's columns. Remember the columns where we had these cracks. Now, you might go, well, wait a minute. Are we talking about the same thing we did like a week ago? Yes, we're talking about basalt. But just please remind me, what was the story here? When did this basalt of eastern Washington begin? What number? 16. Yeah, 16.7, according to your study partner, 16.8, whatever the hell it was. That's way younger than this story. So please, let's not be confused. We're talking about basalt again today. We're talking about pillows again today. We're talking about columns again today. But look at the ages. This cannot be lumped in with our, I'm not even going to draw them. This isn't the fissure thing. This isn't any of that. You're dying to say something. What is it? Thank you. Thank you. Now, there's some basalt in Oregon that also falls into this age pattern down along the Siletz River. That's why this is called Siletzia, by the way, not a huge point. There's uh, in British Columbia some of this same basalt that's 56 to 48, the Matosan basalt. Again, I wouldn't worry about those names. I just want to give you the sense that this is more than just a Washington story. This is a big story. And I'm pausing because we're about to enter a world of exotic terrains where we will be for Thursday, Friday, and Monday. The next three full lectures will be talking about these things called exotic terrains. And we're about to is an exotic terrain. You want me to spell that for you? Exotic terrain. And in geology, the word terrain is spelled like that. Terrain, a piece of land that is exotic to North America. It was made someplace else. This piece of real estate that I'm talking about, this crescent basalt, is part of something bigger that's an exotic terrain, that was a piece of land that was formed not part of North America, and it's part of North America now. You can see why this is going to be a a real can of worms for us. All sorts of really difficult things. to. Th we're almost at the end of the class, man. Of course we're going to get fancy here at the end. We're not coasting to the finish. We're doing razzle. This is full razzle-dazzle now, baby. It's all right, mama. Let's do it. Okay. Let's cut to the chase. Who thinks they have an idea for what happened here? If this is an exotic terrain, where did it come from? Mason? There's a little bit way over it, like the East Pacific rise to Japan, somewhere far off in the Pacific. It gets brought over with the Farallon. As it comes over, and you have the Farallon subducting and there's no. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. Thank you. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'll, I'll kind of use the model we had before. Mason says, okay, well, Maybe this is basalt from the ocean, and maybe it's part of the East Pacific rise somehow. And then Mason said other words, but I wasn't really listening, because I, I want to just involve other people as well. Thank you for your participation. We can come back to you. Does somebody else have an additional idea, a different idea, uh, about the origin of this? It has to be, we don't know anything about this time frame, right? This is way older than what we've been doing the last three weeks in class, essentially. This is older than the Cascades. This is older than a lot of stuff. It's younger than the breakup of Pangea. But other than that, I don't know how much we know about this time window. So you can't really screw up. Anybody else want to get something on that, uh, Jack? Uh, uh, Hunter? Wow. I, I, oh, man. Man, that was close. That almost was a moment. Hunter? Just kidding. Hunter? Yeah. Well. 
Well, that's a creative thought. I'll, I'll write it down. Uh, Hunter's wondering if a tsunami, which we know is a series of waves that come in off of the ocean, uh, Hunter's thinking maybe the tsunami brought in some of that basalt. Very creative idea. This is a lot of basalt that's in, in bedrock, that's in place. And I think if it was truly a tsunami deposit, it would be more along the lines of those sands or kind of things just truly along the coast. So this is a very slow motion bringing in over the course of millions of years. You know what? I'll, I'll spitball off of that. Thank you, Hunter. And this is a very important lesson for us. Um, we are going to talk about many exotic terrains over the next few days. We're studying our first exotic terrain right now. It's called Celestia. So let's keep your notes nice and clear. The cre uh, oh shit, how am I going to... Um, yeah. So the, the name of our exotic terrain today is Celestia. And Celestia is... Includes the crescent formation of Washington. It includes some of that Canadian basalt and some of that Oregon basalt. So all I'm trying to say is that the crescent is, is just part of this bigger thing called Celestia. We don't have to go through the Oregon names, do we? So let's just, let's just say that. I'm a little bit uh, confusing right now, so let me say it one more time. Celestia is a big exotic terrain. And Celestia, the big exotic terrain, is this set of ages. This thing called Celestia started to build basalt eruption. Celestia is nothing but basalt. The Celestia basalt started to erupt 56 million years ago, and it, started, it, it stopped 48 million years ago. Again, the crescent is just the Washington portion of this thing called Celestia. Okay, so my big point here, and I probably shouldn't be doing it on this board because you can barely read it, but I guess I will. With these exotic terrains, it's confusing because we have two dates. What's the age of the bedrock? And what's the age of adding it to North America? I slowed down to make sure that you see that that's a huge point. Somehow get that in your notes, please. We need to be disciplined when talking about exotic terrains from this point forward. We need two sets of dates for each exotic terrain. How old is the stuff where we create the exotic terrain? And that's not here. That's some, it's exotic, right? So it's, it's made someplace else. And then secondly... What's the age of adding it to North America? So, so far, the only date we have, 40, sorry, 56 to 48, that's the age of eruption. That's one of two dates that we need for Celestia. I have the other dates for you. 51 to 49. So this is a, a, a challenge for you to take excellent notes. Everybody can write these numbers down, but can you make sure to note what these numbers are saying? I'll say it one more time, and then we'll move on. Celestia was created between 56 and 48 million years ago. But Celestia was added to the Pacific Northwest between 51 and 49 million years ago. So just for clarification, the thing's still erupting as it's being added. Right? There's an overlap in these dates. It's still erupting as it's being added. But the fun is trying to come up with a concept, a visual for what this is, and that's what I want to do with you before we quit. I don't think I'm going to be, I'm not going to have enough time to involve the cascade question. We'll have to get to that tomorrow. I'm calling an audible here. I want to go, oh, it's on the back. I want to go back to the Pacific Northwest map. 
I think we can do this in five minutes. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really junking my plan and I'm going to something else, but I think this will work. Um, here is our... Okay. Washington, Oregon, Northern California. What's this? It's Silesia. Crescent basalt in Washington, Silets, volcanics in Oregon, a little bit of Matosan basalt up in BC. And here it is. When was it created? 56 to 48. When was it added? 51 to 49. What do you visualize? for what this Celestia thing looked like when it was out in the water. Who can help us? What does it look like? It's got pillows. It's got columns. There's a hell of a lot of basalt. Who wants to try? Nothing? I thought we'd have that. Am I not asking a good question? Casey? Spreading ridge, perhaps? It might be a spreading ridge. So we're back to this thing. So I think I want to push us along. It's more than a spreading ridge story. It's a shield volcano story. It's a massive shield volcano. You remember what those look like. You remember the big island of Hawaii. I'll look at what my arms are doing. I'm not making a cone now. I'm out in the water, and I'm making a huge pile of mafic material. But it's even bigger. We know this. It's even bigger than the big island of Hawaii. It's even bigger than Iceland. This thing called Celestia. I can't even draw it on this map. I'll just put it right here. It was off the coast of Northern California as a huge, large, igneous province. That's such a weird kind of generic name, but that's really what we view Celestia as originally. Let me spitball on this for just a second. I'm trying to help you see what Celestia might have looked like when it was built out in the Pacific Ocean. Mason got us started with an East Pacific rise, but I want to think bigger than that. I want to think of this massive amount of basalt that built off of the ocean floor and got big enough to get its neck above sea level. It was a huge island. So if you don't see it, the pillows are the submarine part of the large igneous province. That's the lava going into water. Thank you, Casey. But then the columns are part of the Celestia that were above sea level. I don't think I need to draw that. Maybe I'll do it to start to next time. But what I want to do before we quit, because I think we can do it. I believe in you. I think we can do it. Why did this huge, large igneous province called Celestia start to build out in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Northern California 56 million years ago. Hint, it's not the East Pacific rise. Can you think of another possible scenario? Emily, too. Uh, could it be from the oh, baby! Damn, that feels good. Nice job. Emily, too. This was an idea 20 years ago, and now it's confirmed among most geologists. Did you hear what Emily too said? Maybe the Yellowstone hotspot. Do you remember it? Maybe the Yellowstone hotspot has an older history than the last 16.8 million years. Let me remind you very quickly, because we did this already on this board. It's going fast now. Yellowstone hotspot here today, blah, 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 blah. Hotspot used to be in different locations, blah, 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 blah. Fissures propagating north. Who gives a shit? Okay? That whole story is nice and tidy in the last 17 million years, right? Roughly 17. I'll just put 17 here. And for most of my teaching career, I would say, well, I don't know what the hell happened, but something happened 17 million years ago uh, to start the Yellowstone hotspot. But now there's more and more evidence that out here in the Pacific, 56 frickin' million years ago, 
that same hot spot was in the Pacific Ocean. And it built Celestia. Now, why is this a large igneous province built by the Yellowstone hotspot? Why aren't these large igneous provinces? Who can answer that? Mason. Thank you. You got it. If we melt ocean crust, we make basalt. We know the difference between ocean crust and continental crust. We're using multiple lectures worth of content now and putting it all together, and I hope that you can see it. Hunter's looking at his watch. Not a good sign. So large igneous province. If we melt the ocean floor, we create a pile of basalt. By the way, the Celestia large igneous province has 14 times the amount of basalt as all of the German chocolate cake. We said the German chocolate cake was a big-ass pile of basalt, and it is. But that's 14 times, the 14 times the volume of basalt out in the water. Let's finish the thought in the two minutes that I have left. Now, we start dragging North America to the southwest, do we not? Over this stationary Yellowstone hotspot, and in a sense, the Yellowstone hotspot starts to slip beneath North America, not because the hotspot's moving, but because North America is dragging over the top. The only problem with this story is we really do not have a continuation of the calderas through northern Nevada and northern California, and we do not have, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff offshore of Northern California that tells this story. Can you think of why that is? Tim? We're looking in the wrong place. We should not be looking here for these old calderas between 17 and, let's say, 45. Where should we look, Tim? We should look to the north. Why? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's all coming together. I'm getting chills. I'm yelling. Mason says he was right, even though the instructor didn't call on you. All right, all right. There's a place called the Crooked River Caldera in central Oregon. That's just one of newly discovered major calderas in Oregon that were originally lined up as part of this pattern, but have since been moved into Oregon because of the clockwise rotation being younger than this story. I've lost some of you, but the good news is most of you are communicating with me. I can tell it. And Hunter really wants to go, so he should leave. But for the last 30 seconds, let me do one more thing. If we did not have this clockwise rotation, we would have this beautiful string of pearls and then we would leave the caldera story and get into more basalt on the ocean floor because of what Mason said. If you melt ocean crust, it's a totally different experience than, than melting continental crust. I promise this is the last comment and we'll pick it up on Thursday. This original Celeste out in the water is now squished into a very small area on the map but in the subsurface, I'll show you some animations to show you that almost all of Washington and Oregon west of the Cascades, in the subsurface, almost all is Celestia. It's the last exotic terrain to add. So we're starting our exotic terrain discussion with the last one to come in. Guess what? There were dozens more that came in before Celestia that have their own stories, and that's what we're going to dig into for the next three lectures. Thank you for your attention today. I love you. Hunter, Godspeed. I have a Mason sighting, and I will talk to you in just a second. I was going to ask them, because of the direction, if we pulled a Hawaii and the fact that we have this sort of shape, and we have the exact same shape here as we do with Hawaii. Uh... With a couple of plate shape, I don't think so, though. No, I don't. I, I, I see what you're doing there, Mason. Uh, but, um, 
I don't think with either plate we have a sudden change in the plate direction. Instead, we have this rather gradual intraplate deformation. And that's what I was wondering about, um, because we see a very sharp sort of change with the Y, and it sort of looks like we have a similar sort of angle coming in with... Uh, it does, but I, I don't think you... you Think of what I just said, and I, I think that's more along the lines with what we're talking about. Do we have... Uh, do we not have a linear trend anymore? The caldera is correct. And if that's all you're saying, then I agree with you. Oh, that is mostly what I'm saying, because then we also know that this side is moving up like this anyways. It is, but it's still all the North American plate. It's not yeah, like we have a change. The North American plate is quite literally that shift we're talking about along the West Coast going up. Got it. Good. All is right. Is that right? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Bryce. When do you, did you just find out newer dates? Because last quarter, I think you said 55. Was it formed and 50 was the accretion date. Yeah, I do have some more precise dates from the work I've been doing in the last few months. Yeah, so Makes sense. you can keep coming because uh, this That's section of the class is going to be taught totally differently than last time. Yeah. yeah. Could you email me my grade six? Since I, don't I did. Have to the... Email your grades. I don't have access to the canvas. I emailed you about doing the field trip assignments. Yeah. Do those, and then we'll talk about your, your final scores. Oh, yeah, I just Jordan. wanted to know how I was doing I'm done so with far. you, Mason. Thank you. Jordan. Okay, so for my test this week, I yeah. time and a half, and I haven't been using it. Okay. Well, especially for the quizzes. Right. I want to miss this. Did time. you have enough time today, for instance? I didn't get to finish my last sentence. Oh, last one. let's do that. Are you want to do that? Yeah. And then for the last exam, did you want? Uh, yeah. I feel like I'll get a better test score because I studied sure. and do all that. I'm looking back on it and like my good. Yeah, I'm happy to work with you on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't help you today. You know, everybody else was here. So thanks. All right. Uh, Jordan, let's. Uh, I'm going to talk to the home crowd. So can you just fish yours out and just go ahead and finish that thought? Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks for coming. It's always good to see you. Okay, uh, Jordan's finishing up her exam, and uh, otherwise the room is empty. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit. Um, uh, um, the plus of blowing up this part of the class and doing some new things is it's exciting for me and hopefully for them. Uh, the minus is I don't know how to judge time. It's almost like, you know... Eh, it's not until you do it a few times where you kind of figure out. So these sessions are going to be off a little bit. And I'm going to be picking up the story because I, I really wanted to get to a couple other things here, but that's just the way things go. So it's a good process for me, but I hope you understand that uh, it's not going to have a nice little finishing uh, touch because of my inexperience with teaching uh, in this way with these sets of ideas. And I really don't even know what I'm going to do on Thursday and Friday. I need to think about that. Uh, so would the last eruptions of Silesia not be considered exotic terrains? Mm, I guess so. I, I guess so, uh, Saber. It's kind of a minor point. I, I, I need to. It's on my list. I need to know how much of Silesia was erupted before fifty. I think almost all of it, but I think there's a little bit of younger than fifty million year basalt. So it's kind of splitting hairs there, I guess. Uh, so what causes the rotation? So, you know, we're, we're late enough in the quarter now where we're just using things from other lectures. And so I guess one way I could do it is just say, go back and watch such and such a lecture. But I, that wouldn't be very nice here. So I'll, I'll try to do it very quickly. But you won't get a full answer because we've covered a lot of this already. As we understand, the clockwise rotation is being driven by the uh, movement of the Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate. And the far, if you're inland far enough from those two oceanic plates offshore, you lose that effect of the clockwise rotation. That's currently how we understand. But remember, it's just data and then interpretation. And we have the data now to prove that that rotation is a big, big deal. Uh, but that idea about why the rotation is happening may be still, uh, still be room for uh, interpretation changes. Uh, Size-wise, how does Silesia compare to Oahu? Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you a little secret here. 
Um, this one's secret without the live stream stopping. Um, I have some new programs in the works. I don't know if they'll be live streams or downtown lectures or what form they will be, but I'm, I'm kind of emerging from hibernation, um, ready to start reading new scientific papers. And this new set of live streams or whatever, we'll just say live streams, although I'm not sure if that's really true. I'm going to start with Celestia. Basically, if you were with us with the exotic terrain live streams before Christmas, I'm just going to pick up at, we finished with Celestia before Christmas, and I'm going to start with Celestia. And so I've got a whole laundry list of things that I want to learn about Celestia. And one of them is trying to figure out the best I can how the volume of Celestia compares to Oahu, compares to the Big Island, compares to Iceland, compares to other large igneous provinces in, in, on the globe. Uh, I would really like to have that. I think we know that. I just don't know uh, that data yet. Thanks, Jordan. See you, see you Thursday. Um, so a comparison between other locations uh, is, would be very helpful here. I don't know where I am. I'm scrolling around, just looking for uppercase. Uh, I don't want to talk about back arc, John. The White Mountains are immediately east of the Sierras. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, the White Mountains are bounded by normal faults, and so those mountains are there because of normal fault rotation, half graben style, basin and range extension. I just don't, the back arc concept doesn't really uh, resonate with me. So until I can be uh, clearly uh, assisted in understanding the importance of a back arc extensional basin. I just, I just I'm not going to use it. Chris, what does this, does this mean that the thickness of Celestia is greater than the height of Hawaii? I think so, but same idea. Uh, I think I will start Thursday with a sketch, just trying to show the mass. So I guess I have homework for myself. I guess I have homework for myself before Thursday. I'll try to figure out what we know about the dimensions of Celestia, and I'll just show a sketch of this huge, large igneous province, Celestia, what it looked like out in the water uh, in cross section, and show the pillows underwater and show the columns above water, and uh, maybe I'll be able to find a way. I don't know, maybe somebody will be able to help here, send me an email or something, but. Um, maybe I'll have other shield volcanoes around the world or other well-known, like what, what does Iceland look like compared to that? I mean, there's a whole nother issue with a spreading ridge, probably. Oh man, will I get into that? I just did a couple podcast episodes talking about um, Celestia. And the Yakutat up in Alaska. Oh, maybe we'll do that on Thursday. I don't want to get too carried away. But anyway, I got some work to do before Thursday. Thanks for the ideas. Nick, caldera are commonly associated with mineral deposits. Have they found anything interesting? Well, we're really focusing on this large igneous province today, Nick, instead of the calderas. Um, and I don't know about economic geology and the Yellowstone hotspot trend necessarily. I, off the top of my head, I can't think of huge silver deposits or whatever tied to the Snake River Plain. So I guess the answer is no so far. Um, how much of, Ronnie, how much of Celestia melted due to cramming? We'll talk about the cramming. The accretion is the word that the students will learn on Thursday. Um, I don't think of any melting associated with that, that we're simply taking this mass of land and we're adding it and we're deforming it and we're squeezing it and we're damaging Washington further inland as well. Um, but I wouldn't think of melting with that cramming process. Uh, I think I'm still back in time a ways here. I'm just going to continue to stroll. It's Tuesday, but, you know, the labs are done. Uh, so I got time to spend with you here. 
if you do. Ocean floor melted makes basalt. How was the giant's causeway made? Uh, that's a rifting story where uh, North America broke away from Europe. Uh, now I'm automatic scroll down to live. In the GPS vector map of the CWR, why no concentrated westward drift for the rest of North America? I can't follow that, Kent, sorry. Uh, Silver City, active silver mine today. Yeah, Dennis, you know, that's, uh, so Silver City and uh, there's, some, yeah. I don't know if that's more tied to the basin and range normal faulting or if Silver City or some of these other places, uh, I don't know. Maybe some of you do have a connection with the Yellowstone hotspot and precious deposits. I don't, I don't have that connection uh, in my head at least. John, are the Hawaiian and Yellowstone hotspots related to the same mantle plume? I don't think so, but that's also on my list. I don't think for Thursday, but I think I said this on the podcast. I don't think I said it here. I've always meant to look carefully at bathymetric maps of the Pacific Basin and maybe all ocean basins and look carefully at those seamount chains and really look for the first time at which mantle plumes we know exist in the ocean basins. And I guess which mantle plumes used to be in the ocean basins and are now under a continent like the Yellowstone story. I don't really have all that figured out in my head. Uh, but I think it's safe to say the Hawaiian hotspot and the Yellowstone hotspot are two separate entities and have been for many tens of millions of years. Let's do a few more. How much of Siletia was above water? Um, that's also probably my homework for Thursday. Um, I'm confident with uh, Ray Wells' scientific papers, I can figure that out. I'll have some kind of sketch for Thursday. Uh, yes, Michael, uh, Vancouver Island is a totally different exotic terrain called Rangelia, which we will not discuss in this class, but we had a Rangelia live stream before Christmas. And that's a different large igneous province that came from the other side of the Pacific Ocean. So if, if this business of exotic terrain is brand new to you and you joined uh, the 101 class here sometime this winter, um, I guess that's good because you're kind of getting introduced to the concept with the rest of these guys. But uh, I made lots of progress between September and December for me personally with exotic terrains, uh, what we know and what we don't know. It's a, it's a bunch of very wild ideas, but there's enough data now to make some sense out of much of that. So at some point you might Look at those exotic terrain live streams. There's, there's some good stuff in there. I'm proud of those live streams. That's about, um, that's some of the best stuff I can offer. I have offered in the past. I'm hoping to do something similar again because I, I like to challenge myself a little bit. And that was a big challenge for sure. Challenge for everybody, including the folks watching. Uh, two more. Myra, I would not think of Silesi as, well, whoa. Wow, we're going to finish with that. Myra from Canal, British Columbia. Is that you? Quenel? That's such a simple question. Is Silesia the cause of clockwise rotation? I never really thought of it that way. On my list for this new set of programs is to try to read carefully and understand when this clockwise rotation began. I mean, it's most beautifully on display with 
much of the deformation of the German chocolate cake. In other words, it's, it's most clear to casual people that the clockwise rotation is happening in the last 15 million years because we have folded and faulted the Columbia River basalts. We've got the Seattle Fault and all those kinds of earthquake risks, so it's still going on. But I'm pretty fuzzy on what evidence we have to start the clockwise rotation. This goes all the way back to Merle Beck and paleomagnetism. And, and, uh, and we will address Baja BC probably on Monday, I guess. And Merle was looking at evidence for clockwise rotation of blocks of crust that were in Mexico. And, and they're not only moving north, but they're being rotated clockwise as well. So I need, that's on my list. But to tie it to Celestia, that's, I was about to say no, Myra. I was about just to say no, but I'll have to think about that one. That's a good, uh, well, yeah, we're quitting on that one. A toast to Myra. A toast to Emily, too, with a, like, she was just, she's right on it now. And she never spoke to the last week and a half, but she, boy, that was an exciting moment to have her right there with the Yellowstone story. It's the timing and the simplicity of what she says that excites me. Others kind of ramble and they eventually get there. And, and then we got Tsunami bringing in Celestia. Okay. A toast to you for being here this morning. Let me go down to live. I always get scared when I don't see any scrolling comments. Yeah, you're still there. Here's to your health. Here's to your consistent attendance at these programs. I genuinely appreciate you being here every time. Many of you are here every time. Your attendance is better than the guy that showed up late and wanted to take the quiz late, and I said no. Here's to you. And here's to the artistic people of the world, like Ashley and others who see They see much of what we're doing through a visual lens. And thankfully, geology is one of those branches of the sciences that has an aesthetic to it that allows many to combine their natural artistic abilities with some of the scientific rigor. Here's to creativity. Here's to creativity. And in a way, that's what we're doing here. We're creating programs. We're creating community. We're creating, hopefully, positive feelings for everyone. I will not see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Uh, but I will see you Thursday at the usual time, 10 a.m. And that's Exotic Terrain Session 1, which means I don't really know what I'm going to do do. But I, I have some ideas thanks to your questions, and I'll have some other things up my sleeve. But the goal will be to take some of the most fun content from before Christmas and somehow make it work in a two and a half hours worth of uh, programming with these guys in the next few days. Thank you. I love you. Have a good day. Goodbye from Ellensburg, Washington.